Hello and welcome to the Torch Snuffers podcast. I'm your host, Alicia, and with me to talk about Survivor Season 37, Episode 4 uh, of David versus Goliath is my lovely panel group, which consists tonight of Alex Cash. Ah. Stephen Lehman. Hello. And special guest and Survivor semi-fan, Anthony DeMott. They do call me the guest fan of Slamtown. I just want to... Oh, wonderful. Is that because you got dominated by John or uh, were comfortable? Well, that a little I ran for position and got a fair interview process in. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. So you and you and Christian must be uh, co-workers then. We have meetings regularly, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, we got to see a really funny, I guess, charming interaction between Charmpocalypse uh, person, Christian, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to call him because it wasn't charming. It was just kind of an apocalypse uh, in my eyes, although Gabby would have you think differently. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. Anyway... Uh, yeah, so we saw Christian and John talk about Slam Town. And Anthony, are you a fan of John the Wrestler as much as the rest of our podcast is? I hope you're not being insincere because he is actually my number one fan favorite right now. Because I, I was a pretty big wrestling fan, a mediocre wrestling fan. And I love Johnny Nitro. He was one of my favorites. And when I heard he was playing... I didn't care how much he bombed. I was rooting hard for him. And I, I actually genuinely do like him a lot, though. Yes. And he's not bombing this season. He is a favorite of the podcast as well. It is phenomenal to hear. And that will make this go a lot smoother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, yeah, no, but we've been loving how he's we're seeing his human side. And he's kind of getting to reveal his human side. And that's been a big arc of his this season that we've all enjoyed and another player that we've all enjoyed for sadly the very short time that she's been here is B. We were dropped with a bombshell at the beginning of this episode and RIP to B. Steven I know you were particularly rooting for her. Yeah um, I'm sad because you know it wasn't the B's knees that she um, uh, uh, that was an okay pun, but yeah, no, I'm. <laughs> For those of you who can't see, I'm covering my face with my hair because that hurts so much. Yeah, I can't it, did, it, it didn't hurt as much as her sprained MCL, probably. But oh, I, no, I mean that's a legitimate. It was. I I feel bad that she had to leave because she's a fighter. So like, I'm guessing a sprained MCL, like. For her longevity outside of the game, is a bigger issue. So like, for her, it was like taking a step back and realizing that like, she's a fighter that's like something she can't like make worse because it'll screw up her life out of the game. So like, I get why she left. I'm bummed, but you know, it had to happen. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if you guys were getting the same vibe I was from Jeff, but it kind of seemed like Jeff was annoyed at her. He like usually has a little bit better of a vibe when players quit due to something that will actually affect their health in their real life. And it felt like he was pretty annoyed and dismissive of her. Was that just me? No, it wasn't just you. I was like, wait, like he—he he was just like, okay, bye. Like you can go. Like, <laughs> um, I thought it was—I thought it was somewhere in the middle. I think he understood, but he was still definitely a, a little annoyed that it went down like that. I, but I—I I don't think it was. I, I think he obviously knew before it was happening. He had to have known, or else the swap oh, yeah. occurred right after. So. But you can only. But it's a sprained MCL. It's not like you're going to be like, oh my god, that's so terrible. Like it's it sucks, but you hurt your knee. It's she was fine. She just kind of had to leave. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was just one of those weird ones to me. Yeah, yeah. and uh, if we Please. look at it, I'm getting echo. Anyway, if we look at uh, prior seasons, I think we had uh, two torn knee ligaments on uh, Survivor Philippines. One that made the edit in, in the form of uh, Jeff Kent and one that didn't in the form of Abby, who was then relentlessly mocked for not being able to do well in challenges despite having a knee injury. So 
Maybe Jeff is just like, play through it, pussy. <laughs> wow. Um, I did not know that. And this is why Alex catches our encyclopedia on the podcast, because he knows all these cool facts. Um, <laughs> I didn't uh, <laughs> yeah um i don't know but uh the the swap to me made a lot more sense once we got like the b announcement i was like oh no wonder they are now swapping because yet again david is losing another player so um that cleared it all up and we got some exciting new tribes again we we got split into the three tribes instead of the two what do you guys think about the fairness of a third tribe just having to completely start over from scratch? I'm not a big fan of it. I feel like it puts those players at a particular disadvantage. Although, as we saw in the challenge, I guess maybe not this season. Um, I would say, yeah, I think it just sucks. But I think it's becoming less of a factor for people because they, like... They're worried about the game. I think they give them the supplies, or at least some supplies, I feel like. Because <laughs> that obviously it's not fair to just make them like they don't really have time to do that anyway. It's not like because they're it's not like they're doing it like crack of dawn. So but I think they're way more focused on the game at that point. It's not like day one or day two or something that it's you know what I mean? If I feel like I'm sort of making So from like a game perspective, it's yeah, not well, as I just feel. I'm I think at that point they're just completely don't really care, you know, like that much. It's probably like a minor nuisance, but that's about it for them. Gotcha. I don't know. For me, I would feel like physically exhausted and then having to like build a whole new shelter would further physically exhaust me. Cause at least when you're coming off the boat, it's day one, like you've eaten that day and the day before and the day before that. And like, right. I don't know. Um, but it's also but, not a game uh, of like equal playing field. Like, you get twists and turns. Sometimes it's good for you. Sometimes it's not. So you can't. It just is what it is. You can't sit there and complain. But hopefully they're not just sitting there complaining about it. That'd be annoying. But yeah. Um. One one th one thing that I have to say about uh the the third third beach is that I think the producers learned from the mistakes that they had around world uh co wrong and uh second chances when the th the third beach that tribe struggled and i think they struggled mainly because not because they had to build a whole extra shelter but because that beach was utterly bereft it was clearly the third choice beach for a reason so i think uh you know there's only so much camp work that you can do in a day and that it kind of just expands to fill the day although honestly Having not been out there, I can't really speak to the amount of camp work that gets done. But uh, I think they've, I think the third tribe has been doing better recently, and I bet that's why. Gotcha. Because like maybe there's actually coconuts and things around, and it's not just like this barren wasteland. <laughs> that uh, makes sense. And from the look of it, it looks like there's tons of coconuts everywhere on the island, as we saw Carl jumping through them and tossing them all in the ocean and out of the ocean as he was exiled and searching for that coconut. I I thought he was going to drown for a minute. I thought he was going to go out to that cove where like the water was really deep and moving to get more coconuts and I was concerned. <laughs> but uh yeah. Hey. I think he really oversold how hard that was like <laughs> you literally compared it to a needle in a haystack. There was what, like thirty coconuts. Like relax, <laughs> like washed, like stop, like come on with that. That was a little ridiculous. Oh my gosh! Do you guys think maybe he like walked up to it and, and was like, "Here it is," and then they like the producers like made him jump to the ocean and do this montage of like coconut throwing because that would be amazing if that if, if, if he just love like, that. If you just like stumbled on it, and they're like, "No, you made it too easy." You like, you can find it, but like, you have to like do a bunch of like action shots of you like getting in the water and like running and like trying to stumble over things. But you found it. But like, 
you can't, you know. <laughs> Let me just say, if I were the Survivor producer, I would 100% make him do that. Um, because otherwise it would look so lame if you just... I did love the mechanic of the fact that, like, he had to do it right then or it was gone forever. Um, I thought that was really cool, adding that sense of urgency that I don't know if we've really ever seen before, except for, like, the the idols that are hidden in challenges where it's like, game on, you have to do this at this challenge now. But I just thought it was another cool way of kind of like racing against the clock and not having a guaranteed um, outcome. I will say it's a little, sorry, just one more time. It's uh, not super relevant, but you just said it, like when they find the idols at the challenges, I think that's actually a really cool idea. I wish they would do that most of the time. I don't know why I like it so much, but it just seems like Really, you gotta if you want it, you gotta do it in front of try to do it in front of people. Yeah, I think it's because it was just like such an exciting mechanic we'd literally never seen before, and it added so much tension and like drama to the challenge where normally the drama is focused on which team will win. And now it was like which team will win, but like side plot over here, <laughs> will they get the idol? So it just adds even more compelling drama to what is already a pretty exciting situation, which is cool. Um, but uh, yet and yet again, we're like we're now kind of left with what I think is a new twist, which is this idol nullifier. I have not heard of that yet, ever. Yeah, that's a new thing, and the the my take on it is that you know, okay, it's it's. It's season thirty-seven. I'm, I'm even. I'm losing track of the numbers, but yeah, the <laughs> they're uh, the, so it's this. It's this late in the game. They they they're gonna throw in some twists like that. But this one seems like a really long shot to even work. I mean, it's hard enough to play an idol correctly. Now you have to pl play it. Now you have to guess who's playing an idol correctly and then play it against them. And also I'm not even sure how it how it's in, how you're able to play it in secret because it's like you're supposed to write a name on it but I don't even see where you write a name on it. It'll be interesting if we ever get it, get to see it happen but it seems like an even even less of a game changer than like the legacy advantage that you can only use it two specific tribal councils to make. Right. I mean, as far as actually using it, it, because it's used at Tribal Council, I would imagine you just get an extra parchment sitting there for you that you get to, like, write down, like, I choose to play the, I don't know, fire on this or something. Unless they, like, show up with, like, a white paint pen and, they're, like, scratch it off the back. Like, hammer and chisel, they're like, here you go. <laughs> here you go. Like, do it. But, um, so, I, don't get me wrong, I like Carl. I I have enjoyed him from the from the bit that we've seen of him more this episode. But wouldn't it be amazing if he used the idol nullifier and nullified an idol that caused him to be voted out of the game? Just saying, drama could happen. That would be a fun sort of way to have it blow up in, in their faces. It would be horrible. Just and to be like, so oh, bad. you want to see this idol nullifier? It's just one of those yeah. things that either has the potential to be really explosive or completely pointless it, and dull. It it feels very like much like a specific set of circumstances need to happen for it to work. So I like the idea in theory because it's not something that's just like so broken that like you play it and it's gonna like screw right. everything up. Um and I like, like it. The Tyler Perry idol that's like right. He was after the idols played like at, at the tribal council at the final moment. Yeah, right. I do like that part about it. It's yeah. a little more nuanced. A, a bit of a little bit of context on the nullifier. Um, they had it actually in Australian Survivor, uh, in their uh season last year, and it was coupled as a super idol where someone could just play the idol, but also just nullify someone else's, and it just was like. I don't know. It was, just, but they had it as two separate things. So the person who found it, they they saw someone who they wanted to target played an idol, and then they just got up after and were like, "Actually, I'm just canceling this person's idol." So it was kind of like a trump card. So I'm glad <laughs> it's not like that. Gotcha. Yeah, that would well, be a buzzkill. I think what it does, it's kind of strange because it benefits, in theory, a majority, someone who's in the majority, right? Because if you're canceling someone's 
idol that's in yeah. the, it's it's going to be in the minority more than likely otherwise why would you even need to play it you don't right which oh. seems to go against the purpose of what they'd want it for like right. you think they'd want to benefit the minority but but at the end of the day it's it's benefits a better game player i guess if they play it correctly because they would be in the majority anyway so i think it's kind of silly twist but it is what it is i guess I mean, I guess unless like it's you and another person, and you and the other person has the idol, and then it's like you're in the super duper minority and save yourself. Right. That's so. yeah. Which is, a, but it, it's possible. I guess. I guess it's possible. But it's, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if anything is to come of it. Um, I don't know. But uh, anyway, but back to the challenge that got. Carl to exile in the first place. Uh, what did you guys think of it? I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I thought it was a unique twist on the caller scenario, and I personally love that um, that Gabby got to be the one to win it for her tribe after having such a dramatic breakdown <laughs> before tribal. Um. um yeah so with with regard to this challenge i i enjoyed it yeah definitely unique twist on the whole color thing i i i appreciated that it it felt like the first blind challenge that we've had in a few seasons that didn't feel like it was explicitly geared towards nut shots uh just like with all the with all the obstacles being set at exactly crotch height Oh. You know? <laughs> uh so so there was that i i did feel like there, i did feel like there was a little bit of a risk of injury with the whole you know like you're you're on a you're perched on a little wheelbarrow and there's a and if you fall off the balance beam like you're not really in any sort of position to save yourself from face planting but i mean you know it, it's it's survivors, stuff like that happens. So uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the challenge and I enjoyed that there was some swapping of leads and some, some dynamic stuff with that without having it necessarily all have to come down to the puzzle. Yeah, uh, definitely. I thought it was cool. And um, I was, I don't know, I was impressed with, Angelina's calling as well. Uh, I know that the Purple Tribe kind of deemed themselves as like the new almost misfits and like the weakest links. Um, but I didn't particularly see Angelina as one of the weakest ones. And so to see her really um, excel in the challenge and kind of drag her fellow <laughs> Tribe mates across the finish line in second place was very refreshing to see. Um, I don't know, that tribe is kind of interesting. We got to see Nick pull yet again another alliance with alliance name. So now the rock stars exist. Dude, I'll, I'll tell you what though. <laughs> I didn't think his shtick would work. It's it's fucking working. How? I don't know. But he's, <laughs> like, for some reason, it's coming off as super genuine. And I'm not saying he's not genuine, necessarily, but clearly we can see from our vantage point he's doing the same thing with all these people. But they, they're all for it. I don't know why. <laughs> why? <laughs> but why are they into this? It's so... Uh, it's almost unexplainable, but it's, like, charming enough that you kind of root for it to work for him. It's so I I think it's worked for him up until this point. I think Mike has his number and I think Mike realizes that like this dude is doing this with me after knowing me for like a day. I bet you he's doing it with everyone. You can kind of even see from the confessional that he was giving and like the narration is that we were seeing from Mike as this went along um, that he kind of was he seemed at least a little wise to it or a little suspicious while completely going along with it. Um, but we also saw Mike in a past episode feel really close to someone and then be totally fine with cutting them um, in the form of Jeremy. So 
I wouldn't be surprised if we see this pattern continue with Mike and he kind of buddies up and then uses people until he they're no longer useful. Yeah, that's a that's a fair point, but my read and it's still really early. This could be totally wrong, but my read is that Mike is definitely smart enough and savvy enough that he would see through it. But I don't think he sees it as like a threatening thing where he thinks he's like this amazing game player. I think it's seen as more of like a it's har like harmless and maybe I'll use him down the road because I don't think he's like this incredible game player while I think kind of sneakily he's doing a decent job. You know what I mean? And it just seems more harmless than anything in like in somebody like his eyes. Yeah, I can see that. It's definitely not like malicious, isn't it? I'm sure it kind of comes off as like a little nerdy too, which people seem to be really enjoying this like the nerds this season. Um so especially Christian as we're seeing. Um and speaking of Christian, he's getting a lot of really excellent confessional, like, one-liners. Do you guys think that, like, he's a potential contender the way that he's been getting that really, really good airtime? Or is he just good at expressing himself in a succinct, sound bitey kind of way? Uh, see... The thing about Christian is I think he's about as personable of a nerd as you will find <laughs> any like anywhere. He can talk to anybody. Now I I I don't know if I'm rooting for him or not, because his shtick gets a little irritating at times, but I but I've still kind of am I don't know. I can't decide yet. I'm rooting for him way more after this episode than I was before. But I don't know if it's going to translate into serious contender down the road because he might be too nice of a guy to really. Well, maybe he's not. See, it's hard to read. It's I think, like you're saying, it's hard to read with him. Um, I think on Christian, I think he definitely is a contender for longevity. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to take it all home. I think for me, what I like most about Christian is that he feels like he's the most authentic nerd that we've had in this game like Cochran as much as I loved him he was like very much putting on a shtick like Ryan from Heroes Heroes Hustler is very much putting on a shtick Christian I don't feel like we're getting a shtick from him I feel like he really is what he presents himself to be like we get to see those humanizing moments of him with Gabby we get to see those humanizing moments of him with John and I think that's for me what separates him from the other sort of nerd archetypes that we've gotten before him. So I'm I'm on the Christian hype train, so to speak. Yeah, I, I love that. I think that's very, very accurate. Um, yeah, he's great. And um, speaking of his interactions with Gabby, is he in love with her or is he in love with her? Because he is so sweet to her and it makes me happy. <laughs> I think he might want to take her to slam down, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yes, we do. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, but he's had some very, like, really endearing moments, like wiping her tears and just, like, comforting her in, like, all of her sobbing and, like, stress and anxiety from, like, just wanting to fit in and have an alliance with him in this game. So um, I also found it kind of amusing because it was, like, Gabby was crying and then it, like, and then the editors cut to like this song with like a woman wailing and then like went back to get me crying. <laughs> She's an ugly crier. It's not good. Um, yeah, so I appreciated that from the editors for sure. Um, yeah, so it was cool to see. I mean, we got to see a lot of pretty much everyone in that tribe except Allison, uh, who has kind of faded away from view after getting a really strong kind of intense it, like, I guess, edit for the first couple episodes. Like, we knew who she was, and now she's kind of gone. So, but I guess there were a lot better things to be watching. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else have we talked? Oh, we haven't talked about the tribe that went to tribal council. Uh, yeah, so we had an interesting 
tribe, as with all the tribes, uh, there's three Goliaths and two uh, Davids. And so it's interesting to see how they're all kind of playing against each other. Thoughts on the tr that tribe uh, voting out a Goliath and gaining another David. Alex said it himself, which I hadn't thought about until he voiced it, is that a Goliath is gone and now David comes in and now David is majority in this tribe. Super dangerous or worth the risk? What do you guys think? So there is definitely a reason to do it. I see the reason to do it because I think there's more to the sense that he really didn't feel that close with Natalia in general. But I think the way he went about it was completely butchered, and it turned out to be a terrible move. I could easily see him going next, um, easily, uh, if they go back to tribal. Um, plus, he alienates not only the other Goliath on his tribe, but all the other Goliaths. Although... I think it more comes down to the way he handled it because I think there's an easy way you can do that and form a tighter group. Like you can't go into tribal doing it last second. Cause that's, you don't really have an alliance with those David people. You just kind of wanted to make a move. You got talked into it basically. So it wasn't even really your move. Basically you, these people. Yeah, it was talk about it. Right. So that's, I think it could have been done way better and actually been a smart move, but he butchered the hell out of it. Um, yeah, I I was just confused because, like, I get if he wants to make a move on Natalia, like, vote, like, Elizabeth out first, someone who you don't have a relationship with, and then Carl can come back, and then you can vote out Natalia and go from there if you lose again. But by voting out Natalia and having Carl come in and giving the Davids a majority, they can easily throw, like, the next two challenges. Alec and Kara are gone, and then, like, they could merge and David's could have a real shot at that game. Like Alec really like, it's kind of impressive. Like that was like an aggressively bad execution of a move. <laughs> like it was so aggressively bad. I was like, damn, like, I don't know why you did it, but I'm not mad. Like, I feel like Elizabeth like browbeat him off screen and was like, come on, make a big move. You little bitch. Like, come on, do it. <laughs> and then he was like, Oh shit, I gotta, and so he did. <laughs> yeah, the the thing that I was uh, thinking was that it, it would have been smart, or, you know, it would have been less bad, let's put it that way, if he had, you know, locked it down prior to tribal council with the people involved, and at the very least, put in an agreement to get rid of Kara next before him. Uh, but obviously that was not part of the, the discussion. If a, it just, he made the decision at tribal council and B, he didn't even talk to Davy. Nobody talked to Davy as far as we saw. So like that couldn't have been part of the deal. So it, it was, it was just big moves for the sake of big moves. And it's, it's going to bite him in the ass and it's going to be great, especially since, I'm pretty sure Kara makes the next swap at the very least because otherwise Dan and Kara would not be a thing in the edit, <laughs> you know? Fair, fair point. Um, yeah, I definitely agree. I think it was a move that can't like have him be like the origin. So I don't think he'll get the credit and it just was extremely, poorly executed i although i i'm surprised that it happened because the way elizabeth was kind of talking to him on the beach she like reeked of desperation and i was like oh he's gonna be like no to that but it worked somehow so and speaking of desperation like davy also just seemed really desperate when he came up to to kara and natalia just like r running a mile a minute off the oh, map. Yeah. And all that, I I would have I would have ratted out to Elizabeth immediately just based on the way he did that because I, I would be like he's got something to hide, 
he does not seem trustworthy right now. So, yeah, and I'm still, like, I watched the episode again just to see if I could figure out why the hell Kara and Natalia voted differently from each other. Why, why'd one vote go Elizabeth and one vote Davy? I still don't know. This tribe is a mess, and I love it. <laughs> Maybe idol protection? Is that a thing? I, th I think they thought they had convinced them to vote for each other. Davy was voting for Elizabeth. So in case Elizabeth played an idol, they had two votes on Davy as well. Right. So I think it had to have been something like that because any other explanation makes absolutely no sense. Right. It definitely does. not Based on the edit that we saw. Um, I will, I think they, yeah. Yeah, because like Natalia described Kara being like her best ally, and I think Kara felt fairly strongly about Natalia too. And so them not going in as a unified front and understanding what their roles were in this vote like would make no sense whatsoever. And then I feel like it would be this big drama betrayal or like this big confusion with Kara being like, "What happened? Like, why would you vote this way?" But we didn't see that. We just saw her confusion about the blind side in general. Um, yeah, and uh, what a semi kind of blind side it was. It elicited an extremely strong reaction, which frankly, I don't remember seeing very often. And I also am surprised we don't see it more often. Yeah, it's it just shows you how unsavvy of a player she really was. And Davey, for as like desperate as he kind of did seem, and he obviously was, he must have read her perfectly because he knew how to talk to her, like to get her on the track and be like, yeah, vote Elizabeth, whatever. And then obviously she tr showed her true cards of not being so unsavvy that like, how are you saying what you're saying at tribal and at camp? Like after 37 scenes, you'd think people understand, like don't hammer, don't pressure people to like, continuously say you're with me right you're with me right yes jesus christ you asked me three seconds ago yeah um i'm sure that's it must be exhausting to have to deal with that and um i don't know although i did hear an alternate theory from one of you um before this episode started about a certain different reason why natalia got voted out <laughs> I think Natalia made a joke, or I, I like to think she was dead serious, that Alec flipped on her because she woke him up from a nap, which, like, I don't know, like, I I hope that, like, this cast continues to just be incredibly petty with each other, because, like, I don't know what they did to each other, but I'm kind of loving it, because I... I don't know about you, but I love when people get pissed off when they get voted out. Like Natalia being so blinded by fury and rage that she doesn't know where to put her torch. And then just like turning around to the people who just voted her off and telling them, shut up. I can't even deal with you right now. Like peak comedy, A plus. <laughs> like I, oh God, God bless her. I like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like if I was to get voted out of Survivor, I would simultaneously like burst into tears, like feel like I got punched in the gut and then just be like upset, like real upset. And I don't know if that would come out in the form of like angry words or just like shock and silence, but I think my face would kind of also say it all. And I'm just surprised we see a lot more people being like pretty chill. Just like walking up to Jeff, like getting their torch snuffed and then just like walking down the little path and like, and the exit, like, and the exit interviews always seem to be like all kumbaya -y and like, I learned my lesson and like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'd be, I'd be all like Shane, like, you know, I'm going to go eat a burger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, oh my God. But yeah, the the that 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 exit was it, it was great. The exit interview 
was 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 great like apparently she got according to her she got voted out because she woke alec up from a nap i hear <laughs> and i'm seeing in the chat now that like that little stumble that we saw from her walking out was like that like injured her ankle <laughs> but like between between that between that exit interview and the one with jeremy last week saying that you know An angelina voted him out because he like joked about her being unfaithful with her husband or something like that like like i bring on the spicy exit interviews <laughs> like give me the scovels that i can handle you know <laughs> yeah these are these are great and it's all these exciting little insights of things behind the scenes that we as survivor fans don't get to see and like long to know so it's it's exciting to see all this dramatic stuff happening and unfolding and all these like claims people are making so who's to know if they are true or not but i'm sure as the weeks progress we will find out um but yeah uh and that pretty much wraps up our episode um does anyone have any points they want to make soapboxes they want to stand on yeah um oh you go first Okay, I just want to say Natalie Cole somehow made it to episode five. I don't know how. I really don't know how. Um, I, I honestly, I hope she changes her trajectory soon because, as much as I love Natalie, I feel like it's getting a little stale. So I need a little something different from oh, her than just like, like daring. maybe he could sit next to the fire and like put a piece of wood on it. <laughs> we didn't talk. <laughs> I just like we didn't talk action, about her at all in this episode. Action to go along with the talk, just like a touch. <laughs> yeah. Also, I got I got to say these uh, these 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 tribe names. They're they're a little they're a little weak. Uh, like so 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 you have the 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 Jibani tribe, which you know my mind immediately adjusts that to Jabroni. We have the Tiva tribe, which I, that's a brand of sandals to me, and 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 Vuku sounds like a sounds like a streaming service, like <laughs> I, like really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. But uh, at least the colors are good, and at least they're not at the stage yet where they're forcing like tribe names to combine to somehow make up a new word so we're not at that point yet <laughs> yes <Yeah. Steven. laughs> Steven just typed in our chat oh yes these names like these sound vaguely fijian they'll work <laughs> that might well have been the source of all of these names who knows um speaking of natalie real quick the country should be so hardly so hard ironically rooting for natalie it's not even funny just to troll the system that's what needs to happen i want her to go so far and just be bombing the whole way it'll <laughs> bring me so much joy i don't want her to do well but i or the ironic part of me really needs her to do well yeah we were talking last week about how she's like the perfect person to drag along all the way to the finals if you can manage it because there is no way in hell the jury is voting for her to win a million dollars like i need to hear her just berate a jury and like tell them their faults and like tell someone to like hey you're slouching you're gonna sit up sit up sweetheart like just so condescendingly i'll live for oh that God. oh that is what we need oh we need that so much i didn't oh, know we needed that we need. just voiced it mm -hmm. we need a natalie final tribal council like clapping back at the jury when they're trying to like when it's finally wow, their time to like talk to her oh not to mention the exciting explosive stuff that would that would happen um but uh yeah so only time will tell we have another episode coming up next week um to see and the um advertisement for it is already a little it's already faded from my memory even though i just watched it so you guys you guys remember what was said cat freaking out about getting flipped on that's like all i got the, the, the storm is the goliath in the oh yes the storm is the goliath that was a yeah. good 
Okay. Yeah. But yeah, everyone is a David and the storm is the Goliath or something like that. Wait, did you yes, okay. wait, so did, you call, other side did you call Kara cat? I just want to make sure. No, I said Kara. I think oh, I thought you said cat. I was like, wait. I thought I heard that too. It's entirely possible. But, sure, but, but her she does have the same name as Dan's dog. Let's remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh right. How can oh, I forget Dan's name. dog's name? Um yeah, but anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining me. This has been fabulous, and we will see you all for next episode.